has been confirmed how Audrey Cunningham was how was she deceased by this guy you see on the left, this disgusting human being you see on the left. That is Don Stevens McDougal. And what he did to her is absolutely disgusting and a bit brutal. Uh, We're going to be talking about the Audrey Cunningham case, the missing girl who was now found in underneath the, the bridge, Trinity River in Texas. They linked him to her over evidence found on the phone, pinging the phone. They matched his truck. Uh, her, her backpack was found five miles away from her body, which he crashed. He, he hit the tree and it matched a car to the tree he hit by accident, linking him to the book bag to her body. I got a lot of information to share with you today. Uh, welcome to Novesity. My name is Nov. Uh, welcome to this true crime podcast. Sit back, relax, put your headphones on. I would appreciate it if you hit that like and share button. There's a lot of details to discuss. A lot, actually. You don't want to miss this at all. It's pretty messed up uh, what happened in this case with this poor girl and what he did to her. Now, again, before we continue... I must say that I do respect Facebook and YouTube policies. I would not be breaking any policies at all. I'm not trying to get demonetized. So we will move on with the story. I got some videos, some articles to read to you, even how she sadly deceased, how it happened. I don't have the full details, but I do have some, as this is still an open investigation. This is, guys, this is still new. And this is going to completely break your heart of what he did to her. Now, I do have some information of actually what he did, but it is not completely concluded, and I don't have all the information as he is still talking to the police. He's arrested. He's in their custody, but do we know his true motive? No. Do we know the truth? Is he going to really spill the beans? Probably not. He wants to look as not guilty as possible. You're, you're, we're talking about a guy who has nothing but neo-Nazi tattoos all over his body. It is disgusting. And I am really, 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 I, I don't know how the father of this poor girl, even the grandmother, allowed this man with an attitude like this, with tattoos like that, with his past history since 2007, he groomed children before. We're going to get into that. We're going to get into everything this guy did in his past. He did very, just disgusting things. Sissy said, I got my top fan badge. Thank you, University. You are so welcome, Sissy. And what he did to her, get ready. But what, what I want to do is I want to go through the, uh, the timeline of these videos since the release. And to one hour ago, we have a brand new updated video you do not want to miss. And what I want from you is just to hit the like and share button. That's all I want you to do. Hit that like and share, tag one person on Facebook, my YouTube people, hit the share, hit that like, and comment, 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 comment. Get involved, get interactive, ask questions. Let's get involved and let's see the newest update of Audrey Cunningham, the girl that was found under the bridge. Now, this is pretty sad because I'm hearing some rumors that she was found naked. Not too sure if that's true, but she was found without clothes. And I don't want to tell you what else she was found with. Something tied to her body, which is going to... It pissed me off hearing this. But if I'm not mistaken, I believe he tied a rock to her body to tie to drown her. We're going to get into that. Let's just... Let's listen to these updates. So this right here is the vigil they held for her. I'm gonna skip through this. So all these people came together in her honor. Testing. People from all around. I believe that's her mother, Cassie, if that's her name. Thank you. Now I tried to tell people to get in contact with her so I can get an exclusive interview, but I just, just sometimes I get people with interviews, sometimes I don't. Sometimes they're nervous, they're scared. It, 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 
it happens. Um, it's pretty messed up. It's pretty messed up. Um, let's let's come back to this because this is the vigil. I want to get to the updates, but I want to let you know that they, they held an, a vigil for her. Tonight, a vigil was held for little Audrey Cunningham. We've brought you extensive coverage from the day an Amber Alert was issued for Audrey. And today, a man is charged with capital murder in her death. Fox 26's Abigail Dye joining us live with details on these new charges. Also, an exclusive interview with a victim from that suspect. Don Stephen McDougal, that's the man accused of causing this terrible tragedy. And I've spoken with yet another person who was affected by his violent past. With heavy hearts, Livingston is healing. <coughs> we will not have her walking through our doors anymore, but instead having her walk beside us in faith. After this, Amber Alert turned into a murder investigation. I sadly announced that Audrey's body was located at the Trinity River on the U.S. Highway 59. 11-year-old Audrey Cunningham was the center of a search for nearly a week. But after that discovery, Don Stephen McDougall, a family friend who lived on the property, was charged with capital murder. The court document saying McDougall was supposed to drop Audrey off at the bus stop February 15th, but he never did. It says cell phone and other data placed McDougall at the location that Audrey's body was found. And that rope found at that location was consistent with rope found in McDougall's car. He's a monster. I don't feel like he should be able to breathe the same air that we're breathing. We told you about McDougall's criminal rap sheet. I'm going to pause this. I want you to look at his criminal rap sheet above. His rap sheet is extensive from any way with uh, anything to do with violence, abuse, attacking someone. I mean, we're talking about some serious stuff. Not to mention the one with the little girl, what he did to her. I'm going to say it, what he did, but I can't get into very graphic details here because obviously my, I want to make this content available for Many, many ages for people to learn about true crime and what's going on. This guy hopped into bed with a 10-year-old, and she actually gave an interview. This, this girl that was 10, now she's grown up. She made an interview. She did an interview. We're going to show that too. She hopped into bed, and she was like, you know, he tried to pull her undergarments off and proceeded to S.A. her. If, you, if I'm talking in riddles, please say it in the comments. He tried to S.A. her, and... I'm not sure, I don't want to say he's successful, but the girl was like, what do you know, what are you doing? I'm 10 years old, you know that, right? And he proceeded to et cetera, et cetera, in that manner. He did this, and guess what? He's, I believe he served time, six months, year, and then he never registered as a sex offender. You heard me correct. He never registered as a sex offender. Now, could this be a failed move by the Justice Department in wherever he lives at? I don't know how the father didn't know this, how the father let his friend babysit trust, especially someone who's, who has this kind of rap. Look at his sheet. That's his sheet. That is ridiculous. Ridiculous. Let's continue. Including enticing a child and multiple assault convictions. Kaylin Bolin watched one of those assaults happen to her boyfriend in 2019 when court records say McDougal attacked him with a metal pipe. He was gushing blood from his head, so it was pretty bad. She says McDougal was a neighbor and the attack was likely an effort to steal their car. When I was watching that, it's like, like words can't even explain. I felt helpless. Um, I felt like there was nothing I could do. It was crazy. It was definitely something I don't want to live through again. We spoke with another victim who McDougal attacked with a knife in 2010. Terrifying. You know, it really was. I mean, he's... Like I said, he seemed like a nice guy, but then he's got this whole other side to him that no Car. one seemed to know about until now. Now the search for Audrey has turned to a search for justice. There's nothing that we could possibly say that will bring her back to us. I'm praying for y'all, and I'm so sorry that that monster had to come ever into their life. 
Now, McDougal is in jail tonight. He's being held without bond. And some new information tonight. We now know Audrey's visitation is on Friday, March 1st at the First Baptist Church. That's in Livingston from 5 to 8 p.m. Now, the funeral is the next morning at Rosary St. Joseph Catholic Church, also in Livingston. We'll post those details on fox26houston.com along with this story. And I know I speak for everyone here at Fox 26 when I say I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Sorry this happened to little Audrey and our thoughts and prayers are with her family. I can't think of what this man did to this little girl because we only know so much. Her cause of death was a blunt. Let me let me let me tell you her cause of death. Probably should have said this at the beginning. Uh, homicidal violence with blunt head trauma. I'm gonna say it again. Audrey Cunningham's primary cause of death was homicidal violence with blunt head trauma. We are talking about this sweet baby girl, an 11 year old girl. This man did that to this poor little child. That you, you're only looking at what I told you, primary cause of death. We don't know anything else that he did to her. We don't know. We don't know. This is telling me Trinity River, Shepherd, Texas, that's where the that's where we found her. Date of death is the discovery of her, which is February 20th, 2024, at 1:30 p.m. Homicidal violence and blood head, blood head trauma. There's evidence on her parents' skin shows that it was a homicidal violence. Something happened to her. And evidence on her head, head, showed it was blunt head trauma. Head trauma. I don't know if he continually beat her on the head area, used a weapon, a rock, Pipe, possibility, but he caused some type of trauma to her head. We're not only talking about the violence to her, because it says, with blunt head trauma. I'm reading it right here. That is the disgusting, messed up part. And we're only looking at the primary cause of death. We're not looking at anything else that this guy did to her. Whatever he did else, I don't think I can even stomach it. It's disgusting. Ashley said it just like me. Give me five minutes alone with him. All I need is two. I know exactly what I'm cutting. Mm, let, me, oof, let me shut up. I can't say stuff. I can't say stuff like that. Oh, I caught myself. It's just disgusting. It's disgusting. I want to give a big shout out to Nicole Holder over at YouTube. She gave out... 10 memberships over at YouTube just now. Shout out to Nicole. This is for you. Thank you so much for that, Nicole. Shout out to Nicole Holder. Let's say thank you to her, please. Um, thank you so much, Nicole Holder. We love you. And we can we love your continued support. Thank you so much, Nicole. Shout out to her in the chat. Now, we're going to go into more further detail. There's more things that were just released. And we're going to see what happened. Pamela, thank you for the 199 super chat. We appreciate you. Now, I believe this is the girl. I, I think so. This is the first victim that this guy did. No, excuse me. This is the first victim that he attempted to assault. This is her. Let's see what she has to say on this case of what he did to her. And thank God she didn't pass away like poor Audrey did, sadly. Bridget smells it with the 100 stars. Thank you so much. Also tonight, we're taking a deeper look at the suspect's past. A woman who was targeted by McDougal as a child is bravely coming forward to share her story tonight. She is one of several people who police say experienced violence from McDougal. ABC 13 anchor Elisa Rivas is live to walk us through the timeline here, Elisa. Charlie, Eric, there are so many layers to this story, starting with the case prosecutors are building now. 
and it's hard to fathom. Don Stephen McDougall was a family friend, a person even trusted to live in a camper buying the home Audrey shared with her father's side of the family. Despite his disturbing history, court documents don't get into what Audrey had to endure in her final moments, but they include this haunting detail. Her body was found in the water, weighted down with a rock. The rope he allegedly used was also said to be found in his SUV. McDougall's criminal history goes back more than two decades. Just last summer, police say he stabbed a man he did not know who was helping him jump a car battery. And tonight we are hearing also from one of McDougall's old co-workers who says McDougall attacked him when he threw him out of his home 14 years ago. Let's pause that for a second real quick. So this guy, after whatever he did with her, whatever he did, he took the rope that gave him away along with his car and his phone. They had so much evidence on this guy. Guys, you might as well say it is confirmed. But here in Novesity, we want to get the facts. So I cannot say confirm yet, but it is. This guy discovered... It, they did, law, Let's read this real quick. I'm going to read this for you because it's a little cut off. Law enforcement discovered a large rock tied to the child's victim's body. The rope used was consistent with the rope that was observed in McDougal's vehicle on the traffic stop two days prior. Whatever entity was against this guy, they was, they was against this guy. Do you want to know why? He had a traffic stop and the rope that they saw in the video gave him away. If they had him in custody, in custody, before they even know that he did this to her. On an unrelated case, talk about bad luck. The universe was against this man in so many ways. Whatever you did in your disgusting life, you're paying for it now, sucker. I'm telling you that now. Because the way they caught you and how they tied, they literally took his truck, they cross referenced it, and look at the tree that they hit, that he hit, around where they found the body. I mean, her book bag. You idiot of a loser. I'm telling you right now, you got busted and you're guilty in so many ways. Don't even hire a, a lawyer would be a fool to take your case. Would be a fool to take your case. Any sucker that could tie his rope and they have proof it's your rope. They saw it in a video. You tied it on this poor girl's body. You took a rock to weigh it down so no one could ever find her body. You got to be one sick, disgusting. And I'm telling you. And let me tell you, somebody posted in the comments somewhere. And you guys know me when it comes to kids. I don't play when it comes to kids. This is somebody's baby. But let me tell you, the person's baby, the father... I am so disappointed in you in so many ways because this was your daughter and you allowed a neo-Nazi loving guy like this to be around, your, to subject your daughter to someone? Are you out of your mind? Such a pure, innocent soul who full of love, a bright future, friends and family. Jesus Christ, I got text messages from the mother. We read that in a recent podcast of her saying she wants to see her daughter. I get it. She has a bad past. Shame, shame. Fine. But she's not the one that did this. She did. I mean, she did talk to the guy. Well, all right. Well, this ain't about the mother, but still. It's a damn shame. Damn shame. The parents are at fault here. Guys, looks deranged, said Harley. It's crazy. It's crazy, Harley. It's unbelievable. Jeanette with the $49.99. Oh my God, Jeanette. Thank you, Jeanette. Jeanette. Thank you so much. Shout out to Jeanette over at YouTube. Jesus Christ with the half honey bun. Jeanette. Jeanette, thank you so, so, so much. Now in this video, let's continue because it's going to describe the further details of how things are tied with him the rope, the evidence, 
Now, again, it was a rumor that she was found with no... Do you know what I'm, you know what I'm saying? She, no apparel. So she was... In the water, tied with a... That's disgusting. Just thinking about it. It's disgusting. It's disgusting. Just, just, just a small child. JoJo's coloring nook. Thank you for the five gifted. I appreciate you, JoJo. Can we say thank you to JoJo? She gifted people five subs in the chat. Found in the water, weighted down with a rock. The rope he allegedly used was also said to be found in his SUV. McDougal's criminal history goes back more than two decades. Just last summer, police say he stabbed a man he did not know who was helping him jump a car battery. And tonight we are hearing also from one of McDougal's old co-workers who says McDougal attacked him when he threw him out of his home 14 years ago. I opened the door up and told him he needed to leave and he come at me with the knife and I had my shotgun and I had hit him in the face with it and shut the door on him. I had no idea he was that kind of person. McDougal was reportedly sentenced to four years in prison for that incident. Long before the violent attacks against adults, McDougal also pleaded guilty to enticing a child in Brazoria County back in 2007. The young victim told police he crawled into bed with her and tried to remove her pants. He did not have to register as a sex offender as part of the plea. That is disgusting. You see what I'm talking about? This guy beat someone, stabbed someone. He did so much stuff. Guys, everybody in this podcast, I want you to listen up to me. Read this. Read it. Crawl into bed with a child. A child. It is disgusting. Try to remove her undergarments. I, I don't want to say her underpants. It is disgusting what he did to her. And he did not need to require as a sex offender. Disgusting. Unacceptable. 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 Elizabeth over at YouTube gifted 40 subs. Elizabeth! Another one. Elizabeth. Thank you so much, Elizabeth. Holy chicken strips. Elizabeth! YouTube is popping off. It is Jeanette. Everybody say thank you to Elizabeth for me, please. Everybody over at YouTube, say thank you to her. That is, that is allowing the podcast to continue. Everyone, everyone. <sighs> Elizabeth, you made me lose track. This guy has done the most disgusting thing to poor little... Oh. This man will not survive in jail. I'm telling you right now. This man will not survive in jail. He will not survive in jail. And it is truly, truly disgusting. And I am so upset by law enforcement who, I don't know, why Did would they, they not even dare make him register as a, ex a sex offender? Callie Dime over at YouTube said they made a plea bargain with the devil himself. I am I am so dis I don't oh, talking about this is getting me angry. That's Elizabeth, by the way. This chick is wild. Thank you, Elizabeth. We love you. We, I appreciate you. And whoever, and Nicole, and everybody else. Nicole, uh, JoJo, thank you guys. Let's continue this video for me, okay? Guys, give me one second on the stars. I will read all that in just a second. I didn't, I didn't get to look at it. 
victim is in her 20s now. Oh, do me a favor, YouTube. Uh, can you hit the like button? We got 152 likes and almost 500 people watching over at YouTube. Can you hit the like button for me? I would appreciate that. And Facebook, we just need 40 more shares, my beautiful people over at Facebook. If you're watching me, my name is Noah. Welcome to Novesity True Crime Podcast. Talking about this artard you see right here that's looking like a disgusting mess who murdered uh, Audrey Cunningham, who was found in Trinity River Bridge in Texas. He don't know what it did, he did exactly to her, but we do know he murdered her. He murdered her. He brutally murdered her. He murdered her and put her body in that river and weighed her with a rock. And she was found, you know what, completely no clothing. And it's disgusting. It's disgusting. Audrey's murder is hitting her hard. ABC 13's Luke Jones is the only reporter to talk with her about this and is live now with her story, Luke. And you know, Elisa, she says what happened to Audrey could have easily happened to her. I mean, total shock when she saw Don McDougall's face pop up in online posts. And tonight she says she wants to be Audrey's voice and a voice for other children in similar situations. I'll never forget his face. Okay, this is the girl, guys. Everybody, pay attention. Everybody, pay attention. This is the girl who was 10 years old. And you know what? Put the, put the pieces together. Joyce Harden, what the hell? Joyce Harden with the 5K? All for you doing, my boo-boo. This is heartbreaking. Thank you for keeping it so real. Joyce Harden, you know I keep it real. And I help out as much as I can, Joyce. Thank you so much. Shout out to Joyce over at Facebook, everybody at Facebook. Shout out to Joyce Harden. Joyce! After that. Carissa Davis would like nothing more than to forget Don McDougal's face. I know. Whoa. What happened with the audio? What? Whoa. Wait. Hello? Wait. Whoa. What's going on? Hold on. Oh. Hold on, everybody. I'm having some difficulty with audio. Oh, is there only audio? Hello, 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 hello. Hold on, guys. I'm having difficulty with the audio right now. Uh, give me one second. Everybody, hold on real quick. Everybody, give me one second. Hold on. We'll be right back, guys. Give me just like a little more. Hold on. I'm having a little bit of technical difficulty in camera. I don't know. I don't know how this happened, but my apologies, everyone. I do owe you an apology. So sorry. Just give me just like one minute and I'll get this fixed up for you guys. All right. There we go. We're back with a video camera. All right. Audio bit rate. Okay, this is looking good. Let's see. Don Stephen McDougal. And Audrey Staff. Okay. We are looking good here. All right. Sorry about that, everyone. I do I do apologize for that. Cunningham's body was I do apologize. My bad, my bad. We're we're back. We're back. 
Okay. Sorry about that. My, I, I, my computer was updating automatically. It does that. Uh, probably updated at the wrong time. A, uh, Amy, below radar. Thank you so much for the four super chat. Amy, I you, why, why are you guys are being so nice today? You guys, you don't have to do all this stuff for me. You guys, I, I want to I wanna help women and children and even, 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 even the fellas when it comes to crime. You know what I'm saying? Like, I want to spread the truth. And um, you guys are so kind to me. I, 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 Joyce Harden, I love you. Thank you. Elizabeth, everyone, Nicole Holder, JoJo, Carmen, everybody, thank you. Sherry with 145 stars. She says you're the best. No, you, the audience is the best. I'm not. You guys are amazing. Vicky says, to think this was the last face she saw. Oh my God, Vicky. Oh, that's the, I can't even think about that. Vicky, I can't even think about that. This was, this guy was the last face he actually saw. She saw this. This is the last face she saw. Whatever he did to her, it's, oh, it's just disgusting. And I don't want to know. Thank God there wasn't further details to t tell you. But when that autopsy comes back, when that autopsy fully is concluded, all hell is going to break loose. All hell is going to break loose when I tell you. Like when I tell you, it's going to like, it's going to, it's going to break loose. It's disgusting. It's basically what Ashley just said. She just said gross. It is gross. It is. From one of McDougal's old co-workers who says McDougal attacked him when he threw him out of his home 14 years ago. I opened the door up and told him he needed to leave and he come at me with the knife and I had my shotgun and I hit him in the face with it and shut the door on him. I had no idea he was that kind of person. McDougal was reportedly sentenced to four years in prison for that incident. Long before the violent attacks against adults, McDougal also pleaded guilty to enticing a child in Brazoria County back in 2007. The young victim told police he crawled into bed with her and tried to remove her pants. He did not have to register as a sex offender as part of the plea. The victim is in her 20s now, and Audrey's murder is hitting her hard. ABC 13's Luke Jones is the only reporter to talk with her about this and is live now with her story, Luke. And you know, Elisa, she says what happened to Audrey could have easily happened to her. I mean, total shock when she saw Don McDougal's face pop up in online posts. And tonight she says she wants to be Audrey's voice and a voice for other children in similar situations. I'll never forget his face after that. Carissa Davis would like nothing more than to forget Don McDougal's face. I know he's a nasty man. And what he did to her one night in 2007 when she was 10 years old. She was at her uncle's Brazoria County house for a family gathering. McDougal's sisters were family friends. That's him the day, I think, right the day before he got uh, arrested. That's the day that you just seen. And this is the girl that he, he did that to. Carmen with the 100 star says, the dad had to be okay with the tattoos. I mean, he didn't hide them. As parents, you, don't, you have to do better. Don't hesitate to look people uh, up that come into a home. You know what? Does somebody have an image of this guy? He has literally neo-Nazi tattoos on his body. I'm not kidding. Does anybody have a... I know he has images on the internet. And I, I can't look at it right now. I can't look for it. But if, you've, if you have it already, can you just DM it to me real quick so I can show you guys? This guy, the father let him... Yeah, let him have his daughter alone with the girl. Alone. Alone. Alone with the girl. Just me over at YouTube with the five super chat. She says, so sad for this baby girl. I cried for her. No, if I love watching you. Are very you keep uh you are very much elite. oh okay keep it up. We need more like you. Thank you so much. I will always keep it real and give it to you transparent. You're so welcome and thank you. I appreciate you guys. Christine Taylor, thank you so much for the super chat. We appreciate you. Wait, Starry Night, did you? Starry Night, I didn't see yours. It didn't pop up for me to view Starry Night. And he came into the room that me and my cousin were sleeping in. Davis says McDougal yanked her cousin from their bed, then got into bed with her. Tried to take down my pants, and I immediately jumped up at that moment. I remember looking at him and saying, 
Do you know how old I am? Davis raced for the door with McDougal in tow. Wow. Did you guys hear that? Me. And when he did, I just swung my arm and I hit him. But now that he's been charged with... Ar did you hear what she just said? Listen, listen, listen to what she just said. Get Don McDougal's face. I know he's a nasty man. And what he did to her one night in 2007 when she was 10 years old. She was at her uncle's Brazoria County house for a family gathering. McDougal's sisters were family friends. And he came into the room that me and my cousin were sleeping in. Davis says McDougal yanked her cousin from their bed, then got into bed with her. Tried to take down my pants and I immediately jumped up at that moment. I remember looking at him and saying, do you know how old I am? Davis raced for the door with McDougal in tow. He grabbed me, and when he did, I just swung my arm and I hit him. But now that he's been charged with Audrey Cunningham's murder, she can't help but wonder what would have happened had she not been able to fight back. And everybody was still asleep. I mean, my uncle's backyard was woods. I mean, it could have been me. McDougal pleaded guilty to enticing a child and was sentenced to two years in prison, but got credit for almost one and a half years served. Notably, he wasn't required to register as a sex offender and went on to face numerous other charges. I think Brazoria County definitely uh, failed me and failed Audrey. That is proof right there, and she said it herself that they failed her. This man crawled into bed with her when she was 10 years old. I want you guys to, I want to ask you a question, the audience. By the way, Steve Sample with the 10 gifted over at YouTube. You guys are nuts today. Unbelievable. Steve, thank you so much. Elizabeth, Steve, Nicole, you guys are, wow. Jojo, thank you guys. I appreciate you, Steve. Thank you. I want you to imagine that I don't want you to imagine it, but I want you to put yourself in a position of what is going on here. This guy, I want you to picture this guy sneaking into your child's room at night, God forbid, and then he's doing those things to... He's doing disgusting things. I want you to... Just for a second. You see what I'm saying? No one's going to tolerate that. No one. It's disgusting. It's disgusting. You would not. I know, I know y'all would be, oh, I'm telling y'all. New information now at five, a medical examiner says an 11-year-old Livingston girl died from homicidal violence, including blunt head trauma. Audrey Cunningham's body was recovered from the Trinity River after a six-day search. Don Stephen McDougall is charged with capital murder in Audrey's death. He was a family friend who lived in a camper behind the family's home. The Polk County Sheriff says he was supposed to take Audrey to her bus stop girl last died morning from homicidal violence, arrived. including is being held in the Polk County Jail without bond. Wait a minute, what is going on here? UGM has taken action because it contains music videos. Your dispute. Morning. From homicidal violence. Arrived. Hold on guys, give me one second. What is UMG? I'm going to have to look at this later. Okay. Hmm. Facebook is blocking my video. I, I don't know why this is happening, but right now Facebook is blocking my video. So whoever leaves, you won't be able to see it no more. I don't know why. Facebook, you're like... Let's continue. Let's continue this story, this true crime story. Let's continue. If you so happen to leave and you can't find the video, go on my YouTube channel. I'm still live. I'm still live on Facebook. Don't worry about it. We're good on Facebook, but they're, they're blocking the video. I don't know why. Yep, there it is. I can see it. 
K Cole with the four ninety nine. She says, um, sent dad's what? Sent dad's record on Discord. He had to know about uh, this monster. It's sus. He hasn't come out uh, to talk about his sweet girl. He actually hasn't talked about her yet. You're right, K Cole. You're right. He hasn't. That's a good super chat. You're right about that. Why haven't? Why hasn't he? I would have flipped my mind. I would have flipped my little girl. I would have flipped. Christine Taylor, thank you so much for the super chat. I appreciate that. Karen O'Rat, Facebook. All right, YouTube says, I will never let someone like him buy my child. I know, I wouldn't either. It's disgusting. Why is Russia, somebody in Russia is blocking my video at Facebook? Somebody in Russia and Belarus is blocking my video at Facebook. Tell me that's not crazy right now. It's saying that right now on Facebook. Chat. Somebody in Russia and Facebook is blocking my video. <laughs> what is going on here? Let's continue this true crime. Let's go. Nobody's going to damper my... Uh, nobody's going to damper my mood here. We're going to... No, no, we're not. We're not. Do me a big favor, uh, YouTube, hit that like button, guys. I want to really get to 500 likes. We are almost there, guys. Thank you, K. Cole, for sending that. I appreciate you. Oh, Reagan, I didn't see your super chat. Reagan said, you are the best, Nov. Love being part of this group. We love you, Reagan. Thank you. Has released 11-year-old Audrey Cunningham's... We are talking about Audrey Cunningham, if you're just tuning in, okay? Audrey Cunningham. Hit that like, hit the follow button, and get involved. Let's do it. Cause of death, saying that she died of homicidal violence. Fox 26's Domly Keith is live in Polk County with this update. Domly. Yeah, mourners are covering this community in a sea of purple. 11 year old Audrey Cunningham's favorite color, particularly here at the Trinity River, where the 11 year old's body was found in the water on Tuesday. And we now know, according to the Harris County ME, little Audrey died of homicidal violence, including blunt head trauma. I'm truly blessed to have given birth to such an amazing little girl. Even as 11-year-old Audrey Cunningham's mom tries to grieve the loss of her little girl, we caught up with her at this sunset candlelight vigil. You know, hopefully with all of our candles together, uh, it'll be bright enough, you know, maybe she can see it. It clearly isn't easy to understand how a little girl could be taken away so tragically. According to the Harris County birth Medical Examiner's such an amazing office, little 11-year-old died of homicidal violence, including blunt head trauma and the manner of death is homicide. Her life was cut short way too soon, but the way in which we lost her. Audrey Superintendent Dr. Brent Hawkins says there have been a lot of tears and hugs in the hallways here at Creekside Elementary where Audrey was in fifth grade. In fact, she's been here since kindergarten. So Livingston ISD has now formed a scholarship in Audrey's name and honor. With a kid like Audrey, uh, we feel like that School was her safe place, and she loved school so that it's very befitting that we would have a scholarship that would live on and help other students in their education. Little Audrey was reported missing last week Thursday after investigators say a family friend, Don Stephen McDougall, was supposed to take her to the school bus stop but never did. Take a look at this screenshot. A woman who used to be McDougall's neighbor reported this to police saying it was late Wednesday when McDougall asked if she wanted to buy his SUV. Back this up. Back it up. Back this up. Back it up. Back it up. Back it up. Back it up. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. After investigators say a family friend, Don Stephen McDougall, was supposed to take her to the school bus stop, but never did. Take a look at this screenshot. A woman who used to be McDougall's neighbor reported this to police, saying it was late Wednesday when McDougall asked if she wanted to buy his SUV. Hey, beautiful. You want a Suburban? No, I got a ride, but thanks. Really? Really? Detectives say it's the same vehicle certain evidence was seen in before it was found at the crime scene. This man snitched on himself in ways I cannot even tell you guys. 
I cannot believe this is actually like a real thing right now. This man just snitched on himself so like so bad. You just confirmed it was your vehicle. You just you're so oh my god. McDougal is now charged with Audrey's murder. This isn't Mayberry anymore. And so we have to change the way we think about protecting children in today's world. Livingston ISD has counselors on hand available for students and staff. And by the way, the district's uh, Audrey Cunningham scholarship, the amount of it will be contingent upon donations. No doubt they're going to receive a whole lot. Reporting live in Polk County, I'm Domalee Keith, Fox 26 News. Wait, wait, Starry Knight said something. Hold on, hold on. Starry Knight said a comment real quick that I kind of want to read. Hold on. She sent us, a, not, not a super chat, a comment. But Reagan said, attend super chat. She says, and thank you, Reagan. Thank you so much. She said, I've had three people in my family murdered, two solved, and mur murders in jail for life, and one unsolved after almost 50 years. What? I had two, I have three people in my family murdered, two solved, and murders in jail for life. I am so sorry, Reagan. I had to read that twice to make sure that I understand what I'm reading, and it, and it is. Reagan, that's actually crazy. That's crazy. I'm so sorry about that. Mippy Flip, you said you sent a super chat, right? But it doesn't show here because it's... I, Mippy Flip says, child essayers should always register plea deal or no, says Mippy Flip. You're right, Mippy Flip. You're absolutely correct on that. You're absolutely correct. Starry Knight says he was offering $1,000 or his truck title for sex the night before. That's wild. That's wild. That is how desperate and sickening this guy is. That is disgusting. That is disgusting. 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 Additionally, an arrest affidavit states that cell phone data, video footage, and other forensic evidence led investigators to determine that McDougal lied regarding his whereabouts on Thursday, February 15th. The affidavit also states that Audrey's body was found with a large rock tied to it. The rope was used to allegedly cons was allegedly consistent with the rope in McDougal's vehicle that was observed during a traffic stop two days prior on the 13th. He then took that, he then took that rope, he then took that, and then uh, on the backside of her, weighed the, wrapped the rock, wrapped the rock around her body to weigh it down to submerge her and drown her body. Thank you, Sandra. I appreciate you. You are kind. This is crazy. Let's continue, guys. More updates. All right. So the videos that we're showing now are the latest updates. I have two videos. They just posted two hours ago, and one is about an hour ago. So do me a favor. Hit the like, share, get involved. Um, YouTube, we have 319 likes. YouTube, you guys, thank you so much. Facebook, thank you guys so much too, Facebook. I love you guys. Let's continue, okay? Sue, thank you for the 100 stars. I appreciate you, Sue. An 11-year-old Livingston girl never made it onto her school bus. Today, we learned how Audrey Cunningham died. The Harris County Medical Examiner's Office confirms her primary cause of death was homicidal violence with blunt head trauma. Now, I'm going to reiterate that. It's not just he did something to her head. He did things like he committed an act of homicidal violence. You guys understand that, right? He, and that's only telling you what they, what they determined something so quickly. You understand what I'm telling you? So when they discovered her, her body, they, you can immediately see it. Like, you know what I'm talking about? Like, ah, uh, you can immediately confirm the details of the body of what it was. 
And those are the two things, not one. Do not get it confused. It is two, okay? You can immediately see what happened, all right? Crystal, pa, what's up, Crystal? How are you? Thank you for the super chat, Crystal. My husband plead down on his charges after he also didn't have to register. Oh my God, Crystal, I am so sorry. Crystal, you're brave for sharing that with us. Your husband did that to his, to your eight-year-old child? He also didn't have to register? Crystal, is that, Crystal, if that's okay with you, can I have a quick phone call, a Discord conversation with you on helping me understand why he didn't have to register with your permission? Thank you for sharing that with us, and I'm so sorry. But is there a way that you can talk to us just for a few minutes only to help me understand how he didn't have to register? I don't understand that, and I'm so sorry, and thank you for sharing that with us. I'm so sorry. Ginger, thank you for the, well, the, the, the super chat, the 199 super chat. We appreciate you. Let me know in the chat, guys, if you would like to have me have a phone call with her permission. Everyone, type yes or no if you would like to do a, me. If you would like to hear a, a, a quick interview on someone who actually went through something similar like this, except for the death part. Investigators say her father's friend Don Stephen McDougal was supposed to take her to the school bus stop, but she never made it on the bus. Prosecutors gave, have charged him with capital murder. KPRC2's Coralie Peel is sharing what she has learned from others who say they experienced McDougal's violence firsthand. After Audrey disappeared, McDougal was named a person of interest and was arrested on an unrelated aggravated assault charge in August. Investigators tell us he confessed to that aggravated assault charge while he was being questioned about Audrey's disappearance. And tonight we're hearing from the victim's attorney with details about the violent stabbing. Six months before Stephen McDougal was charged in 11 year old Audrey Cunningham's violent murder, court records show he was accused of stabbing a man in Livingston. Attorney David Feldman represents the victim. He says it all started when a woman knocked on his client's door. She said that her car was broken down. She needed some help. As he approaches the vehicle, he's ambushed and stabbed. Court records show the accused attacker is Stephen McDougal. He was stabbed three times in the back. McDougal was not arrested. Feldman says his client notified authorities last week when he saw McDougal was named a person of interest in Audrey's disappearance. According to Feldman, McDougal was charged a few hours later for the August stabbing. Since then, more victims and witnesses in McDougal's accused crimes have come forward, like Caitlin Bolin, who says she witnessed McDougal beat her ex-boyfriend with a metal pipe in 2019. And all I could see was a metal pipe fly up in the air and slap Tyler in the head. And all I heard was Tyler screaming, stop, stop. Why is it so important for you to speak out now? You have to watch who you bring your children around. Absolutely. You have to watch who you associate yourself with. McDougal is currently being held in the Polk County Jail without bond for that capital murder charge and Audrey Cunningham's death. Corley Peel, KPRC 2 News. Well, uh All right, guys. We are going to talk to Crystal. She is a regular, uh, she's a member over at Novicity on YouTube. She's a super chat, super chat sender. She's a big support, a uh, beautiful person. And she just told everyone that she went through something similar and she did except for her baby being alive, and we are very grateful for that. But we're very sorry for the events that took place with her baby. Uh, Chrissy Ray Flores, she says, I love your energy. This is my new favorite channel. God bless you, Nov. Oh, thank you. I wish um, you can cover my cousin murder. Everyone get the details wrong. I'm so sorry for whatever happened to your cousin of how he was murdered. I'm very sorry. Um, I always get the facts, the details. I do whatever it takes uh, I'm just tired of tr the truth never being told. Um, this is what we do here. This is what we do. Thank you for the super chat. And may your cousin rest in peace. John Molia, my step bro, 500 years in prison, perv. Oh my God. I am so sorry. What is going on? 
Hey, Crystal, how's it going? This is Nove. What's going on? Hey, I'm here. Hey, so listen, I just want to say uh, thank you so much for being so brave, for allowing me to interview you just for a few minutes to help me understand how... I, 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 I want to be clear about something, okay? First, mm -hmm. when we're using specific words, we can't... I don't want to use graphic words because I'm going to get completely demonetized. So if you want to say that word, say <laughs> grape, like the fruit grape. If you want to say yep. certain words, but I want to I want to be raw to my audience also at the same time. So please, if you have anything to share in detail, anything if you will if you would like, out of respect, I mean that with respect, okay? Mm -hmm. I'm you know I, I trust so, you with my audience. So if you could tell us what happened, but help me also understand how your husband did not get how didn't he, yeah how did he not have to register as a sex offender? Because I don't understand how this guy didn't get registered as a sex offender. So please tell me. Okay. So first of all, I was with my ex-husband for five years. I was a single mom. I have um, four children and um, under the age of six. And I had been with him for five years before I decided to marry him. Because I wanted to make sure that he was okay and a proper fit for our family. And right after we got married, he started essaying my eight-year-old, which I did not know at the time. There were no red flags. He wouldn't bathe her. He wouldn't dress her. And he had raised her from two, um, two, two years old. Um, so there were no red flags. But she had gone to stay with her dad for the summer and um, told her dad. And so as soon as I found out, I called the police. Like, I had him arrested. Um, as far Crystal, as... Crystal, give me one second. Mm -hmm. Hold on. Go ahead. Continue. Um, as far as him being charged, they had originally charged him with grape of a minor. He pled down to indecency with a minor. And he was only, he was made to serve seven years to life. They released him after two years on um, good behavior. He was not in the normal population with everybody else. He was kept in solitary so that he would be safe. Um, and they, part of his plea deal was that he did not have to register as a sex offender when he got out. Now, the thing is, is that I found out he was dating a woman with young girls right after he got out. And I called her on, I got her on Facebook mm -hmm. and I told her. Oh, um, wait. Because. Wait. Hold yeah. On. Hold on. Can you say something? Yeah. Okay. Uh, because people couldn't hear you. Give me one second. One more time. Can you speak one more time? Can you hear me? Yeah. Cause it, can it, can everybody hear her? Are we good to go, everybody? Hello. Yeah. 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 I, yeah you're good. You're good. I just want to make sure. Okay. Yep. Okay. Everybody can hear you. Beautiful Jeanette says, "I can hear her fine." Thank you, Jeanette. I right, continue. My my apologies. No, no worries. So yeah, I had messaged her on Facebook, um, and I told her that he had been arrested and imprisoned for what he had done to my daughter. Who did you mess again? Who? His girlfriend that he had when he got out of prison. Oh, okay. I, I found out through the grapevine that he was dating a woman with young girls, and um, I was very concerned. So I reached out to her on Facebook and told her, and... I'm not sorry for doing it. Um, hopefully I saved another little girl from dealing with what my daughter went through because she she ha she went through so much trauma um, that, I mean, she's very messed up now in her head, you know? So she's 30 years old at this point. No, I'm sorry. Wrong child. She is 21 years old at this point and she still has issues with relationships and you know, she became very violent. She was kicked out of six schools. 
for violence after this happened. And um, I'm my heart hurts for Audrey. It's this is very, very much um, triggering for me. Uh, mm -hmm. But that's how they get away with it, y'all. They plead down, and part of their plea deal is that they don't have to register. You only have to register if it's certain charges. Okay, but he was, res respectfully, he was successful with the yes. attack of your daughter. What, I don't under, that doesn't make sense to me. If he was successful with your daughter, how mm -hmm. the hell can he get a plea deal? Answer that question for me. They offered him the plea deal uh, for him to plead guilty. I'm, I'm on live right now. Hold on. Um, they offered him a plea deal. But what's the point because of that way guilty if he got out in two years? He was supposed to serve seven to life. But he got seven to life. Two years don't sound like mm -hmm. life to me. He got out for good behavior. Nope. Yep. Anybody could behave in jail when you're in solitude, correct? Right. Not only that, Nov, but they didn't even let the family know when he got out. I wasn't told. I wasn't notified that he was that he was released. Um it was a big mess. Yeah. It is yeah. truly disgusting to know that they did. You know, if if a felon prior it was able to bear arms, but if you are a felon, you are no longer to bear arms. That's public information, and you have and they they can see that these people mm -hmm. to buy a gun. But if there's an 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 s a, a sex offender who's roaming mm -hmm. in the streets of America, and no one could know because he didn't register, how are we supposed to protect our children? I know, and the saddest part is, as I talked to his ex-wife after all of this happened, she reached out to me, and apparently he had um, there was cause of accusations that he had also done this to her best friend's three-year-old twin girls when they were married. He, how old? Three. Oh. And she didn't tell anybody, so I was really angry with her, obviously, because we were friends, and you would think that she would have shared that information, but she didn't until after. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah, and he'd been grooming my daughter since she was two, so she didn't show any signs of 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 being scared of him. She was very loving with him. She would sit on his lap all the time and hug him. And yeah, yeah, yeah because no. maybe she has Stockholm syndrome. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I am so sorry. Yeah, I am so sorry. Where is this guy? Um, he's in. He lives in Washington. His name is Lee Powell, and unfortunately, I haven't gotten. Any, I haven't figured out how to change my last name on YouTube yet. Um, but his name is Lee Andrew Powell, and um, he lives in Washington State. I'm sick. Hello? I'm sick right now. I know. I'm sick. I know. I'm pissed the fuck off. Yeah. And I, I held a lot of guilt for a long time, and people were like, you couldn't have known. Um, my sister and my sister-in-law and my brother lived with us at the time, and there was no signs. There was no red flags. Everybody loved my ex-husband. He was never like, no signs. It's, mm -mm. it's difficult. Nope. It's freaking sickening. A little baby. A girl, yeah. two, three, four, five, six, eight years old. Yeah, it's disgusting. I want to say something heart, so bad, but I cannot. It's the most heartbreaking thing about this is that she made excuses for him because she loved him. You know, that so sounds like Stockholm always, syndrome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It it was rough. I mean, still to this day, whenever she does bring it up, it's it's hard for her. 
I want you to know that you did, you had nothing to do with this. You had nothing to do with this. You didn't know. You're talking about it now. This is why you're here. You, and you are brave enough to come on air live, live, where thousands of people are going to listen to this. And you are brave for this. And I want you to, I want to, I want you to know that I, I thank you. And then we love you. And well, I love you guys too. And, and, and it's disgusting how he's roaming free and he's a predator. Yep. Because if I have my baby girl, I know the day that I get a, a baby, a baby girl and she, she's going to, yo, oh, oh my God. And part of his plea deal was also he didn't, they were part, part of his original charges was that he wasn't allowed to be around children under the age of 18. And that got plead down too. So he didn't have to, he can be around any child he wants to be. If that's the so. case, if that's the case, then felons should have guns, but they don't. Yep. Yep. It's I agree stupid. with you. I was, it's stupid. It's it stupid. It's dumb. Mm -hmm. Yep. It was absolutely, I couldn't even believe when I sat in court, because I took an 8x10 picture of my daughter with me to court the day that they sentenced him. And I'm like, this is her. This is, this is her. She's not an 8-year-old girl. This is her. And I showed it to everybody, you know, the jury and everything. And I'm like... Please do justice for her. And the judge was, you know, he basically, he said, the most I can give him is seven years to life. Um, he has to serve seven years and then he can go up for parole or for, you know, to file for parole. And then I found out a year and a half later that they used his time in, in jail as time served towards his sentence and they let him out after two years. Unacceptable. Unacceptable. Yeah. Yeah. Unacceptable. 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 So it makes me very happy that you're bringing this to people's attention because I know people know that this happens, but when you've actually gone through it, it's a little different. So this is very triggering for me, but I, I need it to be known that the parents don't always know. And um, I thought I did everything right waiting as long as I did to marry him. And making sure my kids loved him and that he was good to them. And you just, you never know. You never know never. what people have, what their intentions are, you know? So just talk to your kids. That's the biggest thing. Have conversations with them whenever you can. Teach them, because I taught my kids from the time they could talk about good touch, bad touch. And I've always told them, it doesn't matter if it's your uncle, if it's your brother, if it's your dad. It doesn't matter. You need to tell someone. And he had threatened her that he was going to K-I-L-L -L me if she told. So that's why she didn't and, say anything. Yep. So he, you, she, Until he, he she was out of my house. He manipulated her love for you. Her love for you. Yeah. yeah she, that's what he did. That's what he did. Krista, yep. you're... Krista, you did a wonderful job. You did the best that you can. It is just very unfortunate that you it's that you had to be in this position. Because if you even think that you you failed, you didn't. Look at you now. You're talking about it. And I bet this feels good talking yeah. about it. It does. It 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 feels good to know that if I can in any way my story helps one mom or one dad especially single moms we are so predatory you know what i mean people prey on us and um if i can help one mother out there or one dad out there that just talk to your kids that that's it i'm sorry i don't i don't mean to cry but oh, you're fine you're fine it's okay it's gonna be okay just have those conversations with them no matter how little you think they may be because she was eight and I'd been having these conversations with her since she was two. So. Yeah. I'm very, very sorry. Well, listen. That monster's away from you now. Away from your wonderful daughter. Make sure you continue to give her your love and support. Let her, oh, I do. 
and yeah, and that's let her time heals, but let her burn through all that. That trauma, you know, that's good. I, I, I'm I'm sure you talk to her about these things. You try your best, and it sounds like it. And I'm blessed that it's, your daughter it's... is is here with us. She's alive because poor Audrey Cunningham. Is I know, and we don't know if he. We don't. You know, hearing your story, she never told anyone, right? Your your daughter. Well, we don't. The same thing, probably Audrey. We don't know if she didn't tell anyone. No, my daughter waited until she was out of my home, away from him, to say something. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, Chris, so. We are, you know, we love you and stuff like that, and we're very sorry. Okay. Yeah, I just wanted to put it out there. It's, I didn't expect to talk on the phone with you. It was but, my idea. It's, it's my idea. Don't worry about it. Yeah, it's my idea. But yeah. I wanted you because you're it's so related to this case. Similar. But also, you know, yeah. it's good to talk about these things. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I love you, Nova. I love the fam. I'm going to let you go so you can finish your podcast that I'm watching. Yeah. Take, <laughs> a, take, take a little recess, though. You know, clean your face. Get some fresh air. Get, take a little recess, a couple minutes. I want you to pull yourself together because I want you back in the chat. I want you to get involved because we love you. You understand me? Yep. I hear you. All right. That a girl. I want to hear a big laugh, big <laughs> smile. You know, there it is. There it is. You yeah. see? Yeah. Yeah. There it is. You're very brave, okay? I'll, I'll talk to you soon. Okay. All right now. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. It's a lot, especially when you can hear the pain in the voice. You know how they say that the eyes never lie and he don't. But man, you can hear it in Crystal's voice. She's very brave for sharing that with us and I'm very grateful and my heart yearns for her. It's, pretty, it's a pretty messed up situation. And yet they say the system does not fail us. <laughs> you sure I didn't fail us? Ginger with the 999 Super Chat. She says, my child is a survivor of SA. The person who did this is someone we know. He is very close but don't want to reveal because the jury acquitted him of, of the charges. Though he admitted it, he admitted it and they acquitted him? Uh, I don't know what's happening. I don't know. Ginger, I'm so sorry about that. I'm so sorry to hear about that. That's terrible. That's absolutely terrible. Oh my gosh, I don't understand what's happening. <sighs> if you're just tuning in, my name is Noah. Welcome to Novesity. We are talking about Audrey Cunningham, the case of the 11 year old girl that was found in the Trinity River. Welcome to this true crime podcast. If you're brand new, hit the follow button. I would appreciate that very much. Over at YouTube, hit the like. Oh, we had 400 likes. We just need. 97 more likes to go over at YouTube. And I would appreciate it if you just hit the like button for me. Share this video to your Twitter, to your TikTok. Shoot, screen record it. Go back. Do whatever you want. Share it to whatever platform you would like. Share it to somebody in your text message. Do whatever you like. Let's continue this story of uh, Audrey Cunningham. Thank you for uh, people venting in the comments and Crystal sharing your story. I appreciate you very much. And um, you're very brave. Let's continue. At Bear and breaking tonight, new information on the 11-year-old girl missing since leaving home to catch a school bus last Thursday in East Texas. Chief Correspondent Jonathan Hunt has got the latest for us this evening. Jonathan, unfortunately, it's bad news. 
Yeah, good evening, John. 24 hours after saying he still hoped Audrey Cunningham would be found alive, it fell to Sheriff Byron Lyons to deliver heartbreaking news late this afternoon. I sadly announced that Audrey's body was located at the Trinity River on the U.S. Highway 59. My heart aches with this news, and I express with my deepest sympathies and condolences to everyone who knew, who cared for, and loved Audrey. Police have been questioning 42-year-old Don Stephen Mc... Look at this idiot. Look at him. Look at him right there. Look at this idiot. Look at him. He came in and cooperate to take a mugshot. Look at him. McDougal, Look as at a him. person of interest in Audrey's disappearance, McDougal has a long criminal record and lives in a camper van behind the home where Audrey lived with her father, about an hour north of Houston. Police say McDougal admitted he left the property with Audrey to take her to her school bus stop just before 7 a.m. last Thursday, something he apparently had done on several previous occasions. Audrey never got on the bus and never made it to school. McDougal officials say will now be charged with murder. Based on all of the evidence that law enforcement has collected, they are in the process of preparing the appropriate arrest warrants for Don Stephen McDougal. At this time, we believe the appropriate arrest warrant is going to be for capital murder in the death of Audrey Cunningham. And the district attorney says that if the evidence in this case supports it, prosecutors will seek the death penalty. Good. John. Jonathan. I know it's not an, I know guys, you guys don't want the death penalty and I'm for that sometimes. I want to let them suffer, but Jesus chicken strips. I just can't, I just can't. Summer grammar. I'm looking at your DM in just a second. Okay. So this is the picture that I was talking about. He has the neo-Nazi side. Look at, oh my God, my man. That ain't my man, that ain't him. He has the swastika on his left shoulder. How can you let someone with all these tattoos that represents hatred? That's, that's, it's not just that tattoo. It's all over his body. You're going to answer this question in the chat. Would you let your child be babysat by him? Yes or no? Just answer the question. Just answer the question. Answer the question. Are you going to let your child be babysat by him? Answer the question. Answer the question. Please answer the question. Yes or no in the chat. No. No. Tara Parks at, at Facebook said big fat no. Lacey Tucker at Facebook said, absolutely not. David King says, no. He says, no effing way, David King. Janet Maria at Facebook says, hell, no. Lindsay says, no. YouTube, everybody is just saying, hell no. Look at these comments. Jesus, chicken strips. Bula Mama at, at YouTube posted... Something crazy that I can't say. Look at these no's. It's ridiculous. You know, talking about this case is, um, it really sheds some light. And there was a discussion panel at Fox 26 saying what happened to Audrey and how can you put... Let's just, let's just have a look. Watch this. Watch this. Have a look. Listen to this. Staying up late with us here on The Factor Uncensored, we have a great program and great guests tonight. We begin first, as we all know... <clears throat> Let me skip this. ...found in a river Tuesday afternoon. I have grandchildren around that age and it's a horrible evil world that we live in this has broken 
everyone's heart. Don Stephen McDougal is now the chief person of interest. In this case, he's expected to face a capital murder charge. He's currently in jail on an unrelated assault charge. McDougal wasn't a stranger to Audrey's family. He was a friend of the little girl's father and lived in a trailer behind the family's home. The sheriff says McDougal was supposed to bring her to school last Thursday. So far, he hasn't told investigators what happened when they left the home. How do we know and how do we protect children from this kind of evil? Joining us to talk about it here on The Factor Uncensored, trafficking survivor and advocate and mother, Matilda Saragossa and Andy Kahn of Houston Crime Stoppers. So Matilda, when you see this as a mother, as a parent, and we all watched it. We, we remembered when she disappeared. We remember the search and we remember the end results. What is this like to see this with this little girl? I mean, it was just it was just mind blowing just to think that you sent your child off to, to school and the baby never even arrived. And you're thinking that you sent her off with somebody that you could trust. You entrusted an individual to take your baby to school and then things just turn for the worse. What do you do as a mom? You know, mm -hmm. I, could you just imagine the panic, you know, the 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 crying and you know everything that was involved with that. I mean, I I don't even want to imagine if you want me to be honest with you. I just feel like you have people in you in your lives and you have to look at them in a different way and it is such an evil world out there that you can't entrust just anybody anymore and I tell my own grandbabies it's just unfortunate that I have to keep them so close to me and I feel so bad because when we go to places I feel like I'm I'm their drill sergeant and stay right here and don't move <laughs> and don't you know get in the car and you know we have to function in that capacity but that's just the safety measures that you have to take nowadays and of course Andy what uh, Matilda said was trust and what we fail what we always do is trust people we don't really truly know and then we start looking into their backgrounds after everything has already been done when it's too late so for those parents out there who are concerned about children not only in their community but their own children what would you advise them in a situation where you have neighbors and you trust them with those neighbors but you don't really know those neighbors you know there's ways you can find out about your neighbors and there's a way you can find out about people that you're entrusting your child's care with okay. like this particular case just puts the spotlight on they allowed this known career habitual violent felon to basically take care of an 11 year old girl and trusted him to take her to school whether or not they knew about his prior criminal history prior criminal history i don't know but this is a warning and a signal to other parents out there mm -hmm. if you're going to leave your child with another adult you need to do a criminal history check and it's mm -hmm. very easy to do mm -hmm. everything that i do that you do anybody can mm -hmm. do just go to the district clerk's website mm -hmm. register and run a criminal history mm -hmm. and see if this per and you would have saw exactly what we all saw with him multiple convictions three different counties in and out of prison for, the, for his entire adult life. You would have at least known that. Whether or not you would have entrusted your 11-year-old girl with him or not, I don't know. But at least you would have had that knowledge to make that decision. I want to talk to you guys one-on-one -on -one real quick. I do agree with him. I'm not going to lie. You can do it that way. Do it that way. But I, also, I want to also tell you to add another layer of protection. In, there's an app where you could look up like, what is it? It's called Citizen over here, right? Citizen. If you go to Citizen, you go that. Explore crime in your area. You can actually look up. I think you can here. You can look up sex offenders that are registered. But sadly, these people are not registered. And if they were correctly like they should have been, maybe they could have been on this app where I can see, hey, maybe my daughter is safe around here or at this time. Or I know who not to really trust along with my kids. Run a background check. Download an app that shows predators around your area, sex offenders around your area. Stay caution. Know your kids. Communicate. Talk with them. Just because it hasn't happened to you do not think for one second it will not happen to you. Crime happens every 
single minute. When you're awake, when you're taking the kids to school, while you're working, while you sleep. You can save any window of opportunity that causes harm to you, your family, if you just educate yourself and do things properly and don't be so ignorant in saying that it's not going to happen to me. Don't be naive. You can help you and your family by simply checking around your area. Because I would, if I know that I could prevent another attack like this, if I know that I can, I will take that. That's why I'm spending a little bit of my time at the end of my podcast to educate you. For one second, do not think that people like this, look at him. Just look at him. Really, you want me to really look at him? You want to really look at him? You want to really look at him? Really look at him. Look at this. What is this? What do you call this thing? What is that? What is this? What is that? Look at that. Have a look. What do you call something like this? What is this? You can't even take a photo. You can't cooperate with authorities over something that you committed. Bashing people in the head with a pipe, stabbing them. You have all these disgusting tattoos and the father and then the grandmother thought it was okay for you to be alone with an 11 year old. This story is gonna shed so much light on parents now because they're gonna to start to question who they surround their kids with, regardless of what they believe in, what they practice, who are they, what skin color you are, what age you are. I don't give a hell if you a priest. Do not let me have that discussion when it comes to priests and kids. Ha <laughs> ha! Do not let me have that discussion. Because let me tell you something, if people can't even trust priests, you think I'm gonna trust this? Trust no one. Run background checks, ask questions, get involved. A babysitter? Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? That's unacceptable. Unacceptable. Beautiful Virginia over at Facebook says, my kids don't even go to daycare because I just don't trust it. Nothing against daycares is people that are comfortable with this or don't have the family support, but I can't do this. Too much going on in the world. It's different now. I'm going to like that comment, beautiful Jeanette. I'm actually going to like that comment. Well said. Where is it at? Beautiful Jeanette, where's that comment? Well said. Well said over at Facebook. Well said. What the hell did you just say to me? What the hell did you just write to me? Where's it at? Right there. Wait, what did you say? Hold on. Where's your comment? I am Catholic, Nov. Everyone I grew up with was mal. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? I don't even know what to say at that point. I don't even know what to say at that point. I don't even know. In this. Everyone. We are. Before. Hold on. I want you guys to do me a favor. If you're new to this podcast. My name is Nov. Consider hitting the subscribe button over at Facebook, all right, YouTube, and Facebook, hit the follow button. I would appreciate that. Um, that's an entirely different show. Slow down. Sarah, what do you, what do you mean? What do you mean? My husband's had friends who, mal that malaha, by his priest when he was young. I don't even want to talk about it. That's just, all right, this is ridiculous. It's just ridiculous. It's disgusting. Right before the end of the podcast, Netta with the 1999, she's, I think she's going to be our last super chat for tonight. She said, 
I'm so happy I found your page. You are awesome and, and such a humble and caring person. And so are all your followers. Let me tell you something. Anybody that's watching me are, is beautiful. They're beautiful, Netta. And just like you too. Thank you for watching. Thank you for following and getting involved. I appreciate you and the super chat. Bless you. And I appreciate you, okay? Thank you. And anybody who else shared, comment, and liked, I appreciate you. Shout out to my gifters and, and super chatters like Netta, everybody. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. We appreciate you and I love you guys. Um, this is the end of the, um, the podcast. So um, thank you for being here today. This was very successful on, on being educated and spreading this type of knowledge and making sure that our women and kids are safe from predators. Now, now ladies, ladies, I am going to say this. Not every man is, is an enemy, a target, and out to get you. No, not every man, no. Let, let, let me make that very clear here. I know a lot of good men out there, especially men who serve our country, all right? And I want you to understand that even though not every man's a, a monster, they're not all predators. There are very, very good men. All I'm asking is stay caution, educate yourself, and be aware. That's it. And then you will be okay. Okay? You never shared your secret on weight loss. I didn't forget, and you are a great man. I never shared my secret on weight loss because I'm thinking about creating a YouTube channel. Uh, because I'm thinking about creating a YouTube channel on educating people about weight loss. I'm thinking about it. Basically, it's like my journey from how I look now into about two a year of how my body's going to look. Uh, I might give out all my secrets on there, but good catch, Jeanette. <clears throat> good. Catch. Okay. Want well, me to give you one secret? Want well, me to give you one little secret? I'll show you. I'll show you. I'll tell you one little secret to weight loss. That's too much of a secret. Um, no soda. You may not think that's not a secret. That is a secret. No soda. Strict. To, st if you stick to water, you you'll start melting very slowly. No soda. All water. Thank me later for that. That's, that's trust me, that, that helps. No soda. Cut the soda off. All water. All water, okay? All right, everybody. This is the end. I know the, the internet's messing up a lot, and I do apologize. My, my apologies, all right? Guys, get ready for next month. The Novicity merch comes out next month, everybody. And the Novicity website is coming out next month. So watch out, Novicity website coming in next month. Hit the subscribe button if you're brand new over at uh, Facebook. I appreciate that. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Joyce Harden, wait a minute. Joyce Harden, again, thank you so much. She shared 1G stars, 5K stars. I appreciate you, Joyce Harden, over on Facebook. It's good to have you back, Joyce. Get more involved. We miss you. She was like, oh, my boo-boo, I love you some, my shining star. I appreciate you. I miss you. She's She's been a long she's she's been a long supporter of the of the of the podcast a long time joyce harden i want panties what thank you for your love and compassion you are wonderful says ellen elena over at facebook over at youtube thank you so much could you give an update on savannah soto and a kc3 we do have an update for tomorrow on something, but I'm not going to tell you what it is. You're going to have to wait and see for tomorrow. Wait and see, guys. Guys, we've been doing, we've been doing podcasts five times a week. Five, even when I'm sick, I still do a podcast. I'm not going anywhere. You guys are stuck with me, too. I think she's talking about you. Oh, oh, P.O. Box. Guys, P.O. Box is released. P.O. Box released yesterday. The P.O. Box released yesterday. I think she's talking about in your store. Oh my God, Jeanette. You want panty? Jeanette, behave. Jeanette, you better behave, mama. You better, be she's wild. Jeanette's wild. Um, yes, the P.O. Box. The P.O. Box is already posted, guys. I got it. Um, um, let me, should I post it now in the comments again? Let me get the P.O. Box going on. Uh, you can send anything you want. Just no live creatures. That's all I ask. Let me post the P.O. box.
Okay. I got it. Members, you're going to get the P.O. Box today. Public people, you get the P.O. Box tomorrow. We need to talk about our bet, Nov. Summer Grammar, what bet? All right, guys. I'm out of here. Uh, Summer Grammar, just let me know what it is. I want your merch, but... Oh, my God, Jeanette. I would love to send you something. Okay, yeah. Just DM me. Tell me what it is. You better warn your postman. Oh, God. Now I'm scared of what you guys are going to send. All right, guys. Uh, I'll post it on members chat first on Facebook and YouTube. And uh, people who are non-subscribers, you're going to get it manana. Cool? All right, guys. I love you guys. And remember, like I always say, do good, die great. Until then, I'll see you on the next one. Peace out. Oh, wait. Pamela, thank you for the 499 super chat. Pamela, she, I appreciate you so much. KC Super Bowl. We'll, we'll talk about it. I got you. DM me. All right, guys. I love you guys. Let me get out of here. Wow. Love you.